So I was Visual Effects Supervisor again. Um, I think we probably did about 300 shots, which is about 20% of the film or so. Um, our work generally um, was the, the beat where uh, Mowgli's kidnapped in the trees, the monkeys grab him, they kind of swing and they carry him off to the monkey temple. And then we go inside the temple, we see King Louis, um, and then Mowgli makes his escape and the kind of ensuing uh, chase moments and then the destruction of the temple. So that, that whole run was the, the bulk of the work. It was a very different film for us in terms of um, you know, how the, the work was, was captured and in terms of the acquisition and then our processes afterwards. So with Apes, obviously, it was a very different thing. We had, you know, there was a, a live action performance. Matt Reeves, the director in that case, was, you know, he was recording, he was getting the exact performance that he wanted on camera. And those actors were typically, you know, they were, they were responding to other actors. They were responding to the photography. I mean, all of that stuff was on location. So you had a very specific performance that was crafted. And then our job there was to kind of take that performance and then interpret it and translate it and kind of map it onto you know the apes and, and those characters. With this particular film, it was it was it was much more of an exploration, I would say, because we didn't have that. You know, you had Christopher Walken in the recording booth, um, but you know he couldn't really move around in the booth. You know, he's 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 focusing on on delivering a line, and, and obviously the intent of being in the in the sound booth is to deliver a, a you know an audio performance. You know, a, a track that sounds like what you want. You're not after a particular specific performance, I would say, you know, so you're not going to make him re-record something if you want a, a bigger expression or, or something like that. So it's, it's a good guide, but at the end of the day, most of that reference ended up kind of being a, just a visual lip sync guide for the animators. And in particular, um, the, the song and dance moment is, was an interesting section because it wasn't originally planned for our sequence. It was originally uh, an end credit idea as a choreographed dance routine kind of thing. And then it, it got scrapped early on in the, in the filmmaking process. And then it came back later on as a result of uh, test screenings where the audience kind of felt like they were, they were missing that song and uh, it was felt that the scene was a little bit kind of too dark and, and menacing. So it got added back in very late in the game. So we didn't have, we didn't really have anything at that point except for Christopher Walken in the recording booth. So we had to kind of pre vis all of that stuff out and basically kind of create that whole song and dance moment. So it was all um, very much more, like I said, an, an exploration of, of things and much more time consuming process than, than Apes was for sure. To a degree, it's, um, it's, it's a very different approach from how you typically approach most films. Most films, you are, you know, you're putting a CG character into a live action plate most of the time. Um, and this is the other way around. You know, you've got a single live action element. So all of the, the plates were essentially just an element shoot of, of Mowgli, more or less. And then you're integrating those into your, your full CG world. So um, it's a slightly different kind of mindset and, uh, and process, typically. But, you know, we've been building kind of world building full CG worlds and, you know, a number of projects for a long time. So I think it's something that we have a lot of experience with. And um, I think it translated really well. I would say mostly some of the performance, you know, and um, some of the crowd motion in particular. I mean, obviously, Louis himself is a, a, a long exploration and trying to, uh, you know, from the early days, from the design and, and making sure that you're integrating walk-in in a way that you're, you're carrying those quintessential kind of walk-in moments through your, the performances, but also the crowd as well. Most people don't really think about it, but, you know, in the song and dance, you've got uh, a large number of the, the monkeys that are kind of jumping around, they're all interacting, they're bouncing off of each other, and um, it's, it wasn't, um, it, it's, it's mostly keyframe work, you know, I mean, we, we had a little motion capture in the, in the background for some of the, the, the more static monkeys, but motion capture doesn't really translate well to the, the nature of that particular movement. You know, you look at apes where, you know, it was virtually all motion captured, uh, where it's chimpanzees, they do a lot of kind of knuckle walking, they do bipedal travel, all that stuff is really well suited for humans and, and crutches and, and motion capture processes. But with these guys, mostly little langers, you know, the fast, light little monkeys and they jump around, quick changes in direction. You can't really do that stuff very easily with, with humans. So it was a very time consuming process of, of keyframe. Probably the, the biggest advancement for us was, was the instancing on our proprietary renderer and path tracer, Manuka. Um, obviously, it's a, it's a, it's a fundamental uh, part of rendering that's been around for a long while in most renders, but obviously Manuka hadn't been around too long, so we used it as an opportunity to kind of embed that technology and integrate that into it. And it was really essential for um, all of the, the forest renderings and the, the jungle and the trees, trying to make that stuff more efficient so that we could essentially throw an entire forest of CG trees um, at the renderer, which was, which was brilliant.
I'd say part of the process is, is starting to understand the, the language and the, and the grammar of the different um, clients that you work with. So for example, one director may describe things in a certain way. He may say something is, is, is muddy, and that may mean one thing to him, but something different to, to another director. So you're typically trying to get a feel for their, their vision, get a feel for their, their language and their, their descriptions of things and, and where they want things to go. So you have to make sure you have a clear vision on, on that for a start. And then I would say you always try to build off of previous experiences, even though there's um, different technologies and different processes and different in-game um, you know, approaches to things, you try to utilize what you've done before, you know, and, and in this particular film, you know, all the, the design work with, uh, with, with King Louis, you know, we're building off of some of our, our, our design approaches from Andy Serkis and, and Gollum and Caesar in previous films, the way that we kind of integrate some of the, um, you know, the, the specific uh, features of the face into the design of things, all of that stuff, it's, it's been a, a continued kind of learning process that we, we just continue to build on. Personally, I, I really enjoy these these kind of smaller boutique conferences. I mean, there's there's a there's much more of a kind of smaller community type feel to it. And although you know there's um, SIGGRAPH is is a, is a very large thing and it's a brilliant conference in its own right. But personally, I prefer these these smaller type venues and the the amount of um, of really relevant content here is 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 fantastic. You know, it's not often that you kind of see that much content, that much kind of quality content brought into a smaller venue and, and set up like this. So it's been a fantastic conference.